Hey everyone, welcome back to my garage. My name is Paul, and tonight we are going to finally finish this round cribbage board set. This is Paul from the future, so I can tell you that it has turned out quite wonderfully. It's been played on, and uh, it's made its new owner very, very happy. So when we left off last time, we were uh, just we had just put the bevels in with the router. Now we're moving on to the final sand and to the end of the project. All right, we'll start by removing the tape. And since this is going to be our final sand, I'm going to start with 100 grit, and then I'm going to go over it again with a 220 grit for the final. And uh, yeah, then I think we're, I think we may be ready to uh, to finish at that point. Let's get going. So, all right, so well, the first uh, pass was to take off all of the, the yuck and the big major things. I think I'm also going to hit this to take off that little bit of epoxy that leaked. And then I'm going to switch to the 220 to do our final uh, grit and get it nice and smooth. Let's go ahead and clean up the inside of this guy also while we're at it. A little bit of epoxy there. Okay, now it's time to switch out to 220 grit. Okay, you can see I hit every surface several times with both grits. The only piece that didn't get any sanding so far was this, which is the top side of the lid or the underside of the of the drawer, sorry. So I'm going to just go ahead and hit this a little bit here because I don't want to leave it out. This is only 100 grit, but this is the piece that's never going to be seen. But I just want to just make sure it's all clean. Now the last thing before I put uh, the finish on is I want to find out how much depth I actually need for these holes and cut these nails way down because they're just ridiculously long. It's kind of comical. So uh, the holes are not all exactly the same depth, but I think I'm going to go with, let me use our handy dandy combination square here. We could just cut them all down to, I'd say three quarters of an inch would be more than enough. Yeah, let's, let's take them to three quarter inch. So that'll more than cut these in half, but as you can see, there's plenty, plenty, plenty of length. So uh, three quarter inch, I'll just set this to that so I don't forget. Uh, because while this uh, stain is curing, that's another thing I can be doing on the side to be productive. All right. Now let's go ahead and stain. Normally I would stain outdoors, but because this is just a small thing and I'm almost done in here for the night, um, I'm going to go ahead and do it inside and it might rain tonight. Okay, we're going with our classic natural wood stain again, which is just a clear coat. Again, it's my favorite. Not necessarily this brand. This is just the brand that Home Depot carries, but when it comes to stains personally, I like to let the wood that I chose speak for itself. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Normally I put, uh, I apply with a rag, but because there's a lot of little nooks and crannies in this, I'm going to use a brush this time. And then finally, we're going to use these, I'm going to call them paint spikes. I was talking in a previous video about these things, but they allow you to uh, place your work on very, very fine points when it's drying, so that you don't, you're not like setting it down and then the bottom is not going to uh, look right. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm not going to worry too much about getting the stain down in those holes. I think whatever falls in there is going to fall in there. This is a very, very, very small surface. Look at that grain already popping. That's gorgeous. So I'm going kind of heavy on this. Um, and then again, you wait about five minutes and then you come and sop up the puddles with a rag. 
because you don't want puddles because that'll give you weird spots in your stain. So I usually put on the first coat very generously. I'm only going to do one coat on this, but uh, anyway, I do, do that generously. And then um, when I come back to wipe it off, then it'll be really even because whatever is going to go into the wood after five minutes is going to go into the wood already. Okay, double check, look from all angles, see I missed a spot there. And this uh, wood filler, like I said, will take a stain also. It's not going to be the most pretty thing, but I think it, it's not going to be terrible either. So my plan is to put these here in the underside of the drawer. And now I'll do the drawer itself. I know that when I first assemble this, after maybe a day of drying, I'm not expecting it to go together very well because this wood is going to expand after absorbing a little bit of moisture from this uh, stain. And so when I made it, I made sure to leave a little bit of wiggle room for that. But I'm hoping that it'll kind of normalize after a couple of days. I'm actually, like I said, we missed, I missed the first deadline to go when my mom was camping uh, a week ago to give this to her because it just wasn't ready in time. But um, this time I'm actually going camping with them uh, next weekend. So it's two weeks It'll be two weeks late. Sorry, Mom. But uh, better it be two weeks late and look right than on time and look like garbage. So uh, we'll come back to this in five minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to work on these nails. So let me get this sealed up. Cleaning up the stain supplies and cleaning our brush took five minutes. So there's our window. So I'm going to go ahead and just do this and we'll get to the nails afterwards. So I'm wiping with the green. taking up all this extra moisture that's sitting on top and there's plenty left behind. I typically only do one coat. You can do more, but I've always been happy with just one coat. Unless I'm really trying to stain something to be darker. For example, I made these barn doors for this guy one time and uh, it was much cheaper to make them out of this birch plywood, but he wanted them to look like walnut. so. I wound up putting like three coats of uh, dark walnut stain on them. Maybe it was even four coats. But uh, when you just want the grain to pop, it seems to me that one coat seems to do the job. Okay, we have no drips, no, no uh, puddles, so we are good. And we can look at this tomorrow. But for tonight, we'll go ahead and uh, look at, we'll do the nails. I think we're done for the night, and actually the project should be done as long as we don't have to do any finishing work tomorrow. But let's uh, get to the nails. Okay, so I know what my length needs to be, so I'm, I'm just going to do this real simply. Hold this up to the edge here, chop it off. I'm using eye protection, of course, and just chop these down to size. And then I'm probably going to hit them with the sander real quick just to make sure that that cut edge is clean and it's not going to hurt anybody. Just in case, because when you're playing a, a board game, the last thing you want to worry about is getting your finger cut. Ooh. That's why I'm wearing eye protection. <laughs> Alright, that was quick and painless. Um, they look a little bit rugged, but that's kind of what I was going for. I don't know how I'm going to do like an excellent, you know, beautiful paint job on little tiny nails. Probably could but I'm not like a model maker or anything, so. Anyway, uh, nails are done, sanding is done, stain is done. I think everything is pretty much done. So uh, tomorrow, we'll come back to this. Uh, it's already uh, after one o'clock in the morning, so possibly two days. But uh, today is Monday, well, now it's Tuesday morning, technically. Uh, camp leaving for camping on Thursday, so that should leave plenty of time for the stain to dry and do any last finishing touches if need be. So I will, see you guys on the final update all right so here we have the final product I think it looks gorgeous with even just that one coat of um, <clears throat> of the uh, natural clear coat uh, stain and uh, it's a little bit tight right now 
the drawer is just a little bit, a little bit tighter than I'd like it to be. Um, but it, it has been incredibly humid. Um, just yesterday we got the biggest storm I've seen in a couple of years here in Arizona. Normally it's very, very dry. So I think that that's probably just due to the humidity. It still feels kind of moist. You know how it almost feels kind of, kind of cold and uh, softer. Um, so I'm hoping that it will dry out over the next few days. I'm going to leave it inside in the air conditioning where it's going to be uh, much less humid. Um, and hopefully the, uh, the, this will dry out uh, and the, the drawer will slide a lot better. It's still certainly usable as is right now. It's just a little bit tough. So um, anyway, it's worked out pretty well. And here are our little, we've got our little uh, game pieces here. We can throw in the drawer. And if I was to do this again, I would have made this drawer a little bit wider so that it could fit a deck of cards, which would be perfect. So this is just a little bit too small for a deck of cards. And I, I don't, I'm afraid to take any more out of this, but I would have made the central section a little bit wider so that we could do that safely. So, you know, you live and you learn. But uh, I think this turned out very nice and hopefully my mom will like it. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Give me suggestions for if I make another one of these. Leave them in the comments below. Make sure and like and subscribe if you liked this video. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.